We all have a beginning. A moment that changes us, shapes us into who we are. For some, it is a quiet turn, planned, ushered in with precision. For others, it is a sharper twist of fate, leaving scars that never heal. For most, these moments are endured, accepted, even forgotten, while there are those who struggle to forgive, to forget. And there are some, just a few, who pass through the fire, wanting more. I know my beginning. I know where it will take me. It will fall to me, dark, the mightiest of mages, to face my demons and save Eliwold. I summon you, fiend of the lower world. Rise and face your bane. Dark, wake up! You can daydream after your initiation. The masters are waiting for you in the hallowed hall. The door is ajar. Bort has set the combination dial to Shadow Earth Shadow. It's a good thing I found you, Dark. It's not like I can check the records hall, and my finder amulet doesn't work anymore. Nervous? You should be. Just don't be late like I was. Unless you want to repeat a whole year. Good luck! I don't know the combination. Water, air, earth. I need to enter a combination for the hall I want to visit. Then press the gem in the center. Welcome, Initiate. You have trained long and hard under our roof. Your element has chosen you well. Already, your time as a novice is drawing to a close. Soon you will demonstrate mastery over your power. The time has come to claim your element. Before you begin, you must affirm that which has chosen you. Thoughts reflect your nature and your element alike. Respond carefully. You see an old woman lost in the market quarter. She appears confused and begs you to help her. A fight breaks out in the local tavern. The barkeep looks to you for help. The giftless, or non-mages, are... What is magic for? In your responses, you have demonstrated an affinity with the Earth. Do you agree with its assessment, Initiate? Then affirm now the element that has chosen you. You have affirmed your commitment to the air. The years have whistled by and will soon carry you where they please. You may request your first gifts from the Sphere of Knowledge. Your first awaits across the lake upon Lone Island. There you will find a banished priestess, her beauty rivaled only by her cunning and treachery. Take but a lock of her hair. Your second lies within the valley of our closest mountains, where our winged guardians keep watch over the town. Most prized are their griffin's eggs. Return with one. The forest conceals your final task. Many beings and beasts dwell there, most with laws of their own. 
Bring back the horn of a trinacorn. A warning. The townspeople are tolerant of our magic, yet care little for it. Pass by them as the gentlest breeze, and leave them to their small affairs. Go now, focus on your tasks. You have until the new day dawns. Farewell, young novice. May your deeds ensure you a place in the memory of others. Elements guide you. Ready for your tasks? I wrote them down for you, just in case. Do not ask me how I know them. There is a reason I enjoy this job. No offense, but you air mages have a habit of forgetting your own names. By the way, don't forget to acquire your first spells from the Sphere of Knowledge in the Training Hall. The combination is Fire, Light, Light. Board has placed a I have waited ten years for this. Seeker of power, know your element. Say not, but show. Of what do I speak? Prompts laughter against one's soul. Ascribes ally when full. Aids the aim of an arrow. As light as itself. I know, it's... Show. I have to find what it is asking for. Something to do with my element, I suspect. I should search the appropriate hall. Prompts laughter against one's... I have to... I can't. I've been suffering from writer's block since the age of six. I should fill this flask in the fountain hall. Mage's water is always a good thing to have. Igonor's tower is... Igon there are an untold number of halls in... Do you know the combination to the fountain hall? Have you not sailed the three seas? Tell you what, Dark. I'll trade you that information for a healing potion. But... Otherwise, I hope you enjoy guesswork. The three C's. I thought you might come this way. Initiates enjoy partaking of the fountain before setting out on their tasks. Calms the nerves. Come, drink. Works wonders, doesn't it? I remember when you were first brought here. What was it, ten years ago? I had not long been initiated myself. Well, perhaps it was a little longer. Never mind that. I wondered then how your mother could give up such a beautiful child to strangers whose ways she could not know. Oh, but I do not mean to dredge up such memories. The past can be as potent as an illusion, and I have spent long enough studying those. You must stay focused on the tasks ahead. Hey, the water refuses to enter the flask. The fountain requires a donation of precious metal. Ten gold coins. You will need an empty flask to contain the water. There, I filled my flask with mage's water.
dark before you go. Sometimes I glimpse the dreams of those closest to me. Often they make little sense, but yours of late have been clear. I dream of demons, whatever they mean. You dream of greatness, the mightiest of mages. Is that a bad thing? If one's motives are pure, no. But few achieve so delicate a balance, and fewer still maintain it. What are you saying? Let the trials you face reflect your true nature. The lessons you learn will serve you, perhaps even save you. Good luck, Dark. By the way, Dark, if you have not yet visited the Observation Hall, you should do so. How do I access it? Try Light Air Air. Jonas? Jonas! Hmm... Ah, you startled me! I was making a precise calculation of... Uh, of... Well, I knew what it was a moment ago. I suppose you are off to take your test now, hmm? I remember my initiation, I think. It had to do with toads. Or was it frogs? Something messy, anyway. They always are these things. Between you and me, I think you will do rather well. Not only because I had a hand in your tutorage, but to be frank, you are the most level-headed air mage we have had in a long time. Probably. From anyone else, that's just a lungful. But believe me when I say it's from the heart. Or thereabouts. Hmm, what was I saying? Place my open mouth on the glass? Bes May I use your telescope? Of course! What do you want to see? Lone Island. Alright. All set. I see the palace on Lone Island. Is there something wrong with your telescope, Jonas? The palace on Lone Island keeps appearing and disappearing. Have you tried not blinking? I'm being serious. How awful. Oh, I know. It's some kind of water magic or other. Those bubbly blues do love their illusions. My telescope, poor thing, is trying to counter it. So if I go there, I won't be able to see it? Exactly. See what? Ah, oh, never mind. Keep your head in the clouds. Illusions? Of course. I am sure there's a book in the reading hall if you are keen. Transparent fluidity, if I recall. I know that book. You can find it now. Only you would know a book-finding spell. Receive your power. Yes! The sphere has judged you worthy, I take it. Excellent. You are progressing well. Thanks to you. Ah, <laughs> but that is my duty. No? A far cry from this training hall's intended purpose. When our warriors outnumbered the scholars, do you know what you are seeking yet? A lock of the priestess's hair, a griffin's egg, and a trinicorn's horn. <laughs> One might think we were training thieves. Good luck in your tasks. Feel free to consult with me if you wish, and do not forget, 
The world beyond these walls is treacherous. Trust no one. Now, to business. Your trials mark your competence to carry a conductor. Take this. Bear it well. It will channel your element's gifts, allowing you to perform less passive magic. It's handy in a fight, you mean? More like essential. Listen carefully, Dark. The conductor is to be used strictly for defense, and under no circumstances are you to inflict harm upon the giftless humans within the town's walls. This law transcends all others, and has done so since the Orkstein Wars. Now that you have received the first of your spells, I suggest you familiarize yourself with your new abilities. Your raw skills are another matter. As you gain knowledge and experience, ensure to invest them wisely. That way you will improve the attributes best suited to your nature. In this lies the key to unlocking your greater potential. Consider how your recent experience might best benefit you. Decide which areas you wish to improve in. The Conductor alone is a powerful weapon, but it can be made more so. As you venture beyond the safety of the tower, you may chance upon the odd gemstone. These are known to contain particular properties for those who can assess and harness them. When set into your Conductor, you will find your abilities enhanced. Only two may be embedded at any one time. I have been keeping one such gem for you. Consider it an early initiation gift. I confess the power contained within that gem has waned over time. It will not take you long to locate a better one. For now, though, it will suffice. Set it in to one of your conductor slots. Well done. I shall teach you about your newly acquired combat spells. A challenger for Dark! Okay, Dark. Let us start at the beginning. While Electric Orb may be your first spell, think of it as your last line of defense. It uses little mana, but packs a powerful punch once mastered. Go ahead and cast it at your opponent. Very good. Even when magically exhausted, you may still summon enough energy to deter your attackers. Aside from being less effective, it's best if you do not let it come to that. Your accuracy may suffer in the beginning. Apply your intelligence at any given opportunity to improve your prowess. The Fog Spell enshrouds the caster in a thick haze of mist. It is useful for keeping encroaching enemies at bay for a short time. Cast it on yourself now. Good. Remember, enemies won't attack what they can't see. You, however, may continue to cast magic while the spell is active. Now that we have covered everything, would you like a one-on-one -on -one practice session? Not enough mat. Not enough.
Well done, Dark. Try harder next time, Tyler. Now you are prepared. For leaving the tower, at least. Should you yearn for further knowledge, seek the Mixing Martial with Magical Compendium in our reading hall. Ah, uh, yes. You should be able to locate it on the shelf. I take it you want to cross Lorelei Lake? I have a compass that will allow you to navigate your way to the island. Thank you. Not so fast. Uh, what do you want, Cray? Money? Don't be ridiculous! I left something in the Priestess's palace when I was there. I want you to get it back for me. You mean the Priestess took it from you? I'm going to ignore that. The important thing is the item itself. A sapphire brooch encrusted with four smaller stones. It was a gift from someone who has since left Iganor. A girl? That is my business. Now, as you know, we are not permitted on the island unless it is part of our initiation. Promise to retrieve it for me, and I will give you the compass. All right. Deal. Good. Here you go. Oh, and you will also need this. A scrap of paper? What is this? A riddle of some kind? That is for you to work out. I have held up my end. Make sure you do the same. I would hate to see you disadvantaged for breaking your word. What is that supposed to mean? Let us hope you don't find out. It appears to be an... I should stand in a better position. If it isn't nailed down... Ow! Fire ants! Those biting little... I don't suppose you can talk. I don't suppose you can think. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry. I'm not giving you my sap. It's all I have. It's important, and I only need a little. You say that now, but you'll come back for more. They always do. I it's... You who are they? Have others been taking your sap? Not my sap. My bark. My branches. Even my fruit. Pieces of me. Taken bit by bit. They do not even ask. Do they think trees feel no pain? I've always assumed as much. Mm. Try being enchanted. It's not as much fun as it sounds. Perhaps I can find the pieces that were taken from you. 
I do not care about the bark or the branches. The fruit, though, I will not bear another again, and I cannot propagate without my seeds. Who took the fruit from you? The human villain did not give me its name. I think it was female. You think? Humans all look alike. I'll see what I can do. They might be edible. Okay, I've picked an Apple Bliss fruit. Last for sale. Buy one and get another at exactly the same price. Do you mind eight-legged arachnids? The spiderling's glands secrete a venom that is ideal for creating antidotes. I shall pay for any amount you can obtain. And that is how we defeated the giants. How did you travel between the islands without boats? We islanders are expert raft builders. There are no equals. I'll take your word for it. I understand you may have some rare fruit for sale. Rare, yes. For sale, no. Might I interest you in a trade? That depends. There is another fruit I wanted to get my hands on. It's called Apple Bliss. One alone would fetch double the price of a dozen screaming tree fruit. Except they only grow in a clearing along the leftmost edge of the forest. Naturally. Bring me one and you have a deal. Do you have an eye for nature's offerings? I'm in need of more brown mushrooms. Bring me some and I'll compensate you. Thank you. Here's your reward of two gold coins. I have your apple bliss. I'm impressed. As promised, here's the fruit from the screaming tree. I shouldn't have bothered, to be honest. They taste a little sour. They're probably homesick. What? Nothing. Thank you. You spoke of raft building. What does that involve, exactly? 
A good raft is made from four well-fast and even wooden planks, enough to hold your weight. Tying a couple of airtight containers beneath will improve your buoyancy. Finally, you need a means of maneuvering yourself. Since I left the islands, my home, I've missed the taste of exotic fish. I hear there are creatures of the sea that can wander the land. Bring me the flesh of the Cassie Puss, and I shall reward you as best I can. The poster you see here depicts a highly valued customer. He went missing a while back. For reasons I'll never fathom, he ventured into the wastelands. Not surprisingly, that was the last anyone saw of him. I don't expect we'll see him again. I keep the poster displayed as a warning, more than anything. I don't need... I noticed your poster about the Biclops weapon. Mm -hmm. Fresh apples! Plucked for your convenience and priced accordingly! Hey, Sand, we've got a new boy in town. I can see that, Bug. You'll have to excuse my friend. The name's Fend. Dark. He's a mage. I can see that, Pug. Where are you from? Stew Pond, originally. Bit of a sinkhole, I hear. I don't remember. Trust me, you're not missing much. We haven't been here long ourselves. We like to keep moving. We don't want anyone catching up. Shut up, Pug. I'll say one thing for your hometown mage. At least it's too small to have its own lord. Fend has a problem with the thought. Pug. Listen, Doc. May I call you that? Why don't we get better acquainted? Is this your first time in the tavern? Uh, yeah. Excellent. Then you'd best follow the locals' tradition. New boys bide the rounds. What'll you have? What have you got? Ale. Is that it? Well, there's the special that the rough-looking fellow over there's having. But it would probably kill a child like you. The man near the open window? Yeah, keep your wits around him. Is he trouble? Who knows? Rumor has it he's off the wastelands. Or used to be. So he'd know his way around there? Probably. But only the town full would ask. And so, to cover the necessary costs of maintaining my manor, the price of ale will be increased by 15%. Secondly, the appointment of a new town sheriff following the recent passing of the late law keeper Kristen is expected within the month. In the meantime, any criminals, however trivial their indiscretions, will answer personally to my gods and shall receive the full hospitality of the Lord's basement. Thirdly, let it be known that there is to be a new tax called the King's Tribute, this will help curry favor with his majesty, so that he may look with a generous eye toward Iganor's most humble lord. And its community. Finally, anyone caught in my private gardens will receive a fine of no less than 5% of their seasonal profits. This concludes the announcements. I bid you, the working class, good day.
Hopefully he's too inebriated to notice the difference. My seeds! Yes. Now, your sap? Take as much as you need. Working hard, blacksmith? <sighs> Sweat from labor's brow. Ugh. Fresh bread! Get it while it's hot out of the bake oven! There. I've added one drop of sap. I'll save the rest. I've added two drops of sweat. Ew. I have added three drops of a potent beverage. Could you nail these four planks together? Hmm. If it's a matter of money... Hmm. Is that enough? <clears throat> I think he wants more coin. Is that enough? Hmm. Thank you, blacksmith. The airtight kegs have been securely fastened to the raft with the rope I found. I can't use... That should do it.
Nothing. It's an illusion, just like Jonas said. There is some writing on it. It's nice to see the Masters hold their initiates in such high regard. There's no... There's no loot. What is this? A man? No, not quite. Another child enters my domain, seeking to earn his place. To what do I owe the pleasure, Initiate? Have you come to pay homage to the Priestess Amankul? To honor the once and great ruler of Armanash? Do you seek to look upon beauty so immeasurable that men and women once gave their lives for a single glimpse? No? Perhaps you have a gift. A tribute befitting one of my glory and stature. I thought not. A message from your masters, then? Will you inform me I have concluded my sentence? Am I to be freed at last? But I jest. Your kin are not the forgiving kind. Not even after 500 years. I know why you are here. 
to take as those who have come before you have taken. Already I tire of your presence. State what you want of me, child. I have come to ask for a lock of your hair. A lock of my hair? Were I to give it willingly, you would find it no easy task. The curse which has kept me so long, unchanged, prevents even a single strand from leaving my head. A pity the same could not be said of my followers. You will need a special blade, a dagger. It is kept in my treasury. Bring it to me. You must think me a fool if you believe I'd hand you something like that. A fool you may be, but I know what you want, young one. It is not so rare a glint I see in your eyes. That blade can help you, for it contains power, far greater than your masters would let a novice wield. In exchange for your assistance, I will allow you to keep it. Eager to leave? I can imagine. It feels... Uh-oh. I suppose I should have expected that. Impressive. I wonder if the Masters know about this collection. Okay, that's weird. Is the priestess toying with me? The chest isn't locked. But of course, it's empty. Got it! There's a short length of metal inside. It seems to be a piece of something. There is a sapphire brooch inside, encrusted with four smaller stones. You are most resourceful. I have one last task for you. Only the purity of Lake Lurelai will reawaken the magic of this blade. It must be dipped by my hand, 
else the dagger cannot resist the curse of my imprisonment. Bring me water from the lake, and you shall have what you came for. I have the water. Finally, can you imagine? For centuries surrounded by the means, without the means to attain it? My jailers have a sense of humor, at least. But they sent initiates, one after the other. Hundreds must have stepped through those doors, each with their trinkets. Piece by piece, drop by drop, I acquired enough to fashion this blade. You created the dagger? Why? It does not matter. With its magic restored, I am now ready. I only require a small lock of hair. A lock? Silly boy! I will not waste the blade's power on a trim! Then what? You must forgive the deception. What do you think of your new home? Why so sad? Does the child miss his mother? She does not remember you. As for your father... Don't talk about my family! What is this? Motivation. I have had lifetimes to divine the conditions of this cage. For an eternity and more, I thought this my endless prison. Yet no cage is inescapable. It may have taken longer than the world needed to forget me. But I have discovered its weakness. The generosity of others. You, my almost mage, are going to free me. What? Simply agree to take my place, and my time here is ended. Before you answer, consider. I can teach you much. More than any of your brethren are willing or able. You dream of becoming the mightiest of mages. I have seen that future, and can help you achieve it. You need only say yes. A small price, you must agree. Why the dagger, then? A mere formality. A ritual. Nothing you won't forget in a few centuries. You can forget it now! I won't help you! Do not be so hasty. You will not find the alternative pleasant. I will leave you here to reconsider. I have learned patience, among other things. When you have made your decision, you need only scream for me. Five hundred years. Who could live like that? Unchanging, eternal, decaying within. I can smell time's waste in this dungeon. It's sick with entropy. Even the walls. This device has come loose from its wall fixtures. The old lock fell to bits. Sneaking into a woman's bedchamber? Such impudence! Etiquette doesn't apply to people like you. People like me? In 500 years, there have been none! You stand before an ocean storm, child. My will is but its waves. All I see is a failed mage, drowning in her own irrelevance. Strong words spoken by those whose heads now line my walls. So choose your next carefully. I offer you immortality and power. Tell me your answer. Why? Are you going deaf in your old age? As you wish. I need only wait for the next initiate. Whereas you, pupil, are due for your lesson! They both collapsed at the same time. Interesting.
I wonder who, or what, Amon Kool was intending to summon to the palace. Finally, I have a lock of her hair. Wait, don't kill me. I can still help you. Show you the path you seek to power. I'm listening. There is a tome, not in any library, but in the hands of one who does not understand its power. You are fated to find both. Assuming you're right, what then? Seek the tome, then I shall instruct you further. She has fallen unconscious. Is this more guile? Should I believe her? Eternal imprisonment is punishment enough. I had better return to the hallowed hall. I left my bucket in space. I know. You have returned, Initiate Dark. Your efforts thus far have proven your value to this tower. We accept the lock of hair as proof of your accomplishment. Do not grow complacent. The most challenging tasks lie ahead. The Priestess Amankul lives, despite your opportunity to dispatch her. Mercy is a trait we encourage among all our castes. Stand tall in the knowledge that you represent us well. Rest now, then turn your mind to the mountains, where you will need wits as sharp as the eyes that keep watch from there. Not yet. You! You're one of them! From that tower! Most astute. What do you want? A word, and your cooperation. I can make it worth your while. Keep talking. I think it's time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge. Word is getting around that you vanquished the Priestess in battle. Well done. Seeker of power, employ your element. Find the key in a place opposed. Unlock what is yours. In a place opposed. It won't be in the same hall I searched last time, that's for sure. On the contrary... You did 
bit dark. You didn't tell me she was a water mage. A dark water mage. There is a different. What of the priestess? She is as I found her. Though many would have it otherwise, you did the right thing. Let's hope so. Dark, you survived the palace. You don't have to sound so surprised. I'm sorry. Hmm, no effect. Your brooch, I believe? I'm impressed. I almost expected you to hold on to it. Or sell it. I keep my word, Cray. So it would seem. Did you have fun with the priestess? Fun might be too strong a word. But I won't forget the experience in a hurry. No doubt. Enjoy the rest of your trials. How odd. The rock is light enough, but it won't budge. The magnetized lodestone has no effect on the rock. I can't use that item there. I can't use that item on myself. I can't think of a good reason to walk around with dirt in my pockets. I can't use that item there. I can't use that item there. I don't think this would interest Varner. Bort wouldn't want this. It's amazing what one can see with this thing. Even two can see it. What do you see? A man, reading a map in the tavern. Uh, only he doesn't. Doesn't what? Read a map. But you just said he... Lost it! It blew right out of his hands. From inside? I can't imagine how that happened. No, neither can I. <coughs> Maybe someone should find it for him. I hear you. Why? What did I say? I can't use that. <gasps> you took care of the priestess, I see. You saw? I watched everything. I'm not sure whether I should feel grateful or disturbed. Why not both? If I gave this to Jonas, he would only forget where he put it. I used to play with those years ago. I can't you They really are. I can't use that. She wouldn't know what to do with that. Hmm. No effect. Interesting. That rock moves in time with my own float spell. There's a metallic key beneath it. Now that I have the key, what is it supposed to unlock?
I have been trying to open this chest since I arrived 10 years ago. Could it be that this key... There's a scroll inside the chest. Do these runes pertain to my next spell? I'd love to know who created that sphere. Receive your power. Ready for some one-to-one? -one? Clear the hall! Casting Confuse upon an attacker renders it unable to discern between friend and foe. They will attack whatever is closest. Observe. Cast Confuse on the goblin. Excellent! Remember, casting Confuse on multiple enemies can make short work of a pack. Lightning Chain permits you to harness the power of electricity and channel its deadly current toward an attacker. Target one of your opponents. If multiple enemies are present, Lightning Chain will channel through each in succession, injuring them all. Now that we have covered everything, would you like a one-on-one -on -one practice session? Very well. Ah! Without a doubt, the best of the three. All those feathers. I had thought of shifting the observation hall view to one of the peaks. But then I wouldn't be able to see them anymore. My third favorite species. I have made numerous visits to the Flytarian Valley over the years, though the last time I was disallowed entry. Maybe it was something I said? Be sure it doesn't hatch or you will be a mother before your time. Don't you mean father? Don't confuse the child! Proud and regal creatures, like those who have pledged to protect them. You will never find more diligent parents. Keep your head in the clouds! Discretion is your ally, Dark. No good can come of a rash approach. What are rivers without their mountains? A proud and noble race, born from the ashes of the old world, tread lightly in their presence. I have set eyes upon it only once, it is a great privilege to be allowed even a glimpse. Jonas earned his passage, but he will not say how. Ready to read up on your second task? What do you need to know? Something about the mountain. I know just the thing. You should be able to find it now. They build their homes in the trees, which I can appreciate on some level. But why so far from the ground? You have to admire people who preserve nature the way they have. Those formations are the most fascinating thing about the whole valley.
I do not think the eagles will let me pass. I can't use that spell there. Ouch! Aggressive little pests? I'd better give them a wide berth. I will need help dealing with these from someone who understands creatures of the air. The tingleberry bush is free of ants now. The berries have been crushed into a fine powder. Without irritable creatures, their stings can leave a nasty rash, assuming they don't kill you outright. Don't get too close. Is there a way to pacify them? Have you tried singing to them? No, and I'm not going to. Oh, what about putting them to sleep then? That should calm them down. Really? Works for humans, doesn't it? I have heard that the fruit of a certain plant has an intoxicating effect on insects. You can barely keep them away. <laughs> Or awake. Which plant? No idea. They're not really my thing. Keep your head in the clouds. I should see if Bort has any insight to offer about this intoxicating plant. How can I help? That is one for Jonas, I think. I know the plant Jonas was referring to. There's a tingleberry bush growing in the woodland just outside of town. The berries, when dried and crushed, release an intoxicating aroma. Heating the powder in an incense burner will increase its potency. This should be quite effective against the wasps. Where am I supposed to find an incense burner? Seems like the sort of knick-knack the giftless would take an interest in. Are you sure this will work? I saw ants swarming all over the tingleberries. They weren't affected. Technically, ingesting enough should knock any creature out cold. Insects, however, aren't known for their large appetites. Besides, have you ever tried force-feeding a wasp? Point taken. You'll have to smoke them out. Have you a cut, burn, or abrasion? Bandage it up so others need not look at your wound. This I sell, and more. I noticed you have an incense burner. Is it for sale? Uh, that depends. It is of immense sentimental value. How much? If you were prepared to risk your life for me, we might be able to come to a deal. If not? You would find the deal less palatable. I'm listening. When I first arrived, traveling through the northern wastelands, I was accosted by bandits. Fortunately, I managed to conceal my most valuable belongings. If you were to retrieve them... Where are they exactly? Ah, the mind and the eye seldom agree. You don't remember? I recall a deep ravine, a lifeless shrub, and the brittle remains of a beast and its master. My belongings lie in the vicinity of those. Here, this map may aid you. I'll see what I can do. Should you have any bones to spare, I could use them to make charms. For luck, you understand. You would have my gratitude as undying as the walking dead that comprised them, as well as a humble payment.
I have need of new blades for hunting. If you encounter any bandits in your wanderings, see if they can be parted from theirs. Please accept eight gold coins for your effort. What happened to your poster? Vandalism! Cyrus Tabin and I were discussing the incoming trade tariffs. The next thing I know, someone had come along and torn it. There's no respect for anything anymore. I blame Megail. For a ripped poster? Why not? That reminds me. I found the strangest thing. Whoever defaced a poster dropped some sort of grooming item. Only it wasn't like anything I've ever seen. It had the handle of a comb, but in place of the teeth, it was curved like a beak. Might be useful if you had feathers, I suppose. Do you still have this feather comb? I do, but... Go on. I hate to ask, but times are tough. What with our lord raising the taxes for the fourth time this year, I was going to sell it to Sea Long. Are you sure there's nothing I could do to change your mind? Well, I was deeply saddened when I saw what someone had done to the likeness of my valued customer. I mean, this good person. If you could find a way to repair the poster with the missing pieces, that would be a service beyond measure. Wasteland burrower's teeth are said to contain a protein that increases crop yield when ground into a fine powder and used as fertilizer. If you make some for me, your purse will be all the heavier for your effort. Will you meet him, friend? Shh! Not so loud! But will you? I'll consider it. Don't you want to get one for the road? He's run out of things to think, let alone say. I possess an item I think someone of your talents would find beneficial. If you were to pay me, us, the token sum of 70 gold coins, we might be able to arrange a trade. I don't have enough money. Well, let me know when you do. Watch your back out there. In addendum to the previous decrees of the day, it is hereby unlawful to be wearing the same colors as your most generous and compassionate lordship. A fashion faux pas tax will be levied upon the offending party, the resulting proceeds of which will be used to expand further the necessarily diverse range of your lord's garments. Again, I bid you good day. True to his word, Sea Long's valuables are stashed here. By your actions, do you prove your worth? Here is the incense burner. Thank you. That which is loaned is best returned. 
I promise to give it back when I'm done. A promise seeks always a companion indeed. I've packed all the tingleberry powder that will fit. I'll keep the rest. The incense burner is now lit. I had better not breathe this too deeply. Certain incense can affect a mage's concentration. May I use your telescope? Of course. What do you want to see? The mountains. All right. All set. Always so serious, that Varner. Gets around like he is expecting the world to evaporate at any moment. He just needs to learn a little levity. That's a great song. Who was I talking about? Varner. Oh yes, did you know Varner is the odds-on favorite to replace Pyrace as Firemaster? I should know. I'm running a pool. Want in? The tailor's wife locked her husband out of the house again. Probably because he didn't arrive home until just before dawn. Without a doubt, the... My third favorite species. Not that talkative, but who wants a chatty guard? Keep your head in the clouds! You got a problem. Mine. I came here not to be bothered. Makes a good special. Beat it. This isn't the right map. I have no reason or wish to disturb his final resting place. It feels hot, flat, and lifeless. There's nothing to be gained from disturbing old bones.
a treasure map depicting the northern wastelands. A large portion has been torn away at the lower right corner. I believe this is yours. What? How did you... You might say I have a talent for finding things. Is it a treasure map? Shh! Keep it down. So what's the treasure? No idea, but it has to be valuable. Why is that? Why else would the map be in the possession of a man like Hamfed? He owns plenty. Let's just say Hamfed doesn't pay his servants enough. Whatever you're seeking must be difficult to obtain, or you would not be mulling about it in a tavern. What do you want? In? Depends. A colleague of mine uncovered it from a contact on the inside. Where is your colleague now? Dead. Failed expedition? No. He tried to run off with the map. It only takes one unhappy servant and a fistful of coins to breed disloyalty. How would I know where the missing bit is? It was like that when I acquired it. So the map suggests whatever it's pointing to lies deep in the wastelands. That's right. There's a story. Don't know if it's true, but local legend has it that a Panther caravan passed through this region around three centuries ago. Refugees from the Orkstein Wars. They ran into some trouble and had to abandon most of their valuables. It's believed they concealed them somewhere in the wastelands. This map may be proof that it exists. Ever heard of burrowers? Suck you right into the sand, if they don't come up and eat you outright. I imagine that would make crossing the wastelands difficult. Accursed worms can feel you coming. You're one of those air mages, aren't you? Almost. Why? Your kind are known for being light on your feet. That's one way of putting it. Let's say we make a deal. You use your talents, as it were, to find what's hidden out there, and we split it down the middle. Uh, yeah. I guess that sounds fair. Couldn't be fairer. Meet me at the edge of the wastelands, and we'll talk more. According to the map, you begin here. Go north until you reach a large pointed rock, west until you see the bones of an ancient beast, and north again until you see a chasm. What you want is at the bottom. Don't leave anything behind. You got that? It would help if I had the map. Forget it. I'll show you, but that's it. I couldn't scale it by hand. I don't think I can be of much help. As far as I can tell, there's nothing of value. Whatever was in this bag has long since crumbled to sand. This bag is filled with sparkling treasures.
He's only interested in the treasures. Well done. Where are the other two bags? There was a second bag, but it was filled with sand. And the third was missing? You simpleton! It has obviously been hidden elsewhere! Well, hand over what you found. I think I'll hold on to what I have for the time being. <laughs> Don't you trust me? Uh, no offense, but not really. Clever kid. Go on then. Find that other bag. Where? Think. There must have been a clue. The contents of this ancient bag are valuable. No question. What's this? Sifting through the bag of sand has yielded a torn scrap of parchment. It looks like the piece torn off the treasure map. The missing map piece. Give it here. Aha. Uh -huh. This section reveals an alcove directly east of here. That must be where the last of the treasure is hidden. Be warned, mage. This area of the wastelands is not for the faint of heart. It is rife with borrowers this time of year. Should you wish to forfeit your half of the treasure and return to the safety of town, I won't judge you. If you still want your share, though, you'll have to go and get it. I'm going to explore the alcove. Excellent. We'll split the spoils upon your return. Missing something? My conductor! You took it from me when I handed you the map piece! How perceptive. The third bag was just a lie to lure me here? We had a deal! I'm not one to share. Though the borrowers might not make the same promise. One day, I might manage to feel sorry for him. The treasure in the bag has vanished. All that is left is an armband. Better than nothing, I suppose. Thank you for responding to my summons, Dark. Mage Jonas told me of your recent experience in the Wastelands. You were fortunate to have survived. At least I didn't leave empty-handed. It is your prize I wished to speak of. May I see this armband Jonas mentioned? As I thought. When your mentor informed me of your destination, I recalled its significance. You have set foot upon the last known sighting of the rogue forms. I think Jonas may have mentioned them. It is said they could take any shape, like the clouds they may have come from. Some, like Jonas, maintain they were once the clouds themselves. Sadly, they have not been sighted for 300 years. In their time, they were known to have walked the world in various guises, leaving behind false treasures to tempt the ignorant and the greedy. I'm afraid I'm guilty of both. In this instance, however, they have left a treasure beyond price. I'm certain that armband contains great power, tailored to the talents of an air mage. You may keep it with my blessing. 
I thank you for your knowledge and generosity, Master Arania. Continue as you have, Initiate Dark, and soon you will rise to stand among us. Mine blew past swiftly. I barely recall the challenges. The petal of a wyvern hibiscus, I think, was one. It was difficult to avoid their venom. Give thanks to them, for they are the wind in our sails. To wander as a stray breeze is all we can hope for. Everything you need and many a thing you don't. How else does one define a good home? Getting sleepy. My wings are flowing. Let us retire to our hive to rest. The wasps are back inside their hive. If Bort was right, they should be subdued. I've captured the wasps in a flask. You have removed the wasps. We are grateful. Though we are bound by duty to bar your way, we are, likewise, bound to return equal favor. You may pass. The path provides a limited ch- uh, Stay away from me! Leave me be! Stay away! I will hurt you, human! Go! Hold still. I need to see your wound. It is my leg, human. I do not need... Ugh. His leg isn't broken, but it's badly burned, and there's a sharp rock fragment embedded in the wound. I'll need to do something. At least allow me to move your leg into a more comfortable position. Ugh. Thank you, human. Drink this. It should ease the pain enough to help you walk. I've bound his leg as best I can. Come on, up you get. I am Dark, by the way. What's your name? Falk. Why are you helping me? I could not leave you to suffer. Your human friends thought otherwise. What happened? I was flying over the town. I know I am not meant to, but... I like seeing it up close. As I passed over your lord's home, flame engulfed my leg and caught my wing. Flame? From an arrow? It must have been. I made it as far as the pass and landed here. 
I may never fly again. There is no greater shame for my people. If you permit me, Falk, I will return with you to your valley. I need to speak with your leader. He might be less hostile if you are with me. As you have helped me, that seems only fair. I will call for Chief Hawkane at the entrance. You say the humans targeted you, Falk? The Lord's own guards? I saw only the direction the flame came from, the largest ground perch. Megyle's home, I think. A moment later, it struck my leg and scorched my wing. This is most serious. The worst incident since these troubles began. Sorry to interrupt, Chief Hawkane, but to what troubles do you refer? You will do well to remember that a human's place is second among Flyterians, less when he is trespassing. He helped me, father. Indeed, that is why he still lives. Father? Ask your questions, human, but be quick. You are fortunate he is with you and speaks in your favor. You have come this far, human, but no further. You mentioned troubles. Maybe I can help. I think not. Our relations with the humans are strained of late, and this season's envoys have not yet arrived. In addition, we have spied the Lord's own citizens entering the forest, where no human should dare tread. If Megyle is conspiring with the forest folk, as I suspect, and humans have formed such an impure alliance, we would have no choice but to cleanse this land of their tainted blood. More recent and pressing are the thefts committed against our own citizens. Only your kind would possess such frivolous items as those left in our perches. Have you searched your city for the missing property? Why would we? The perpetrators are obvious. I would like to see these perches for myself. You suggest we are capable of a ground dweller's dishonesty? That insult alone hardens my resolve. No human shall again pass beyond this. I will allow him, father. What is this? You cannot... It is so. But know that you would be responsible for this human, Falk. Were he to abuse your trust, your life would be forfeit. I could do nothing to change that. I understand. Very well. You may see these perches, human, once you have shown respect and paid tribute. But remember, should your actions compromise my son, you will suffer by my own talons. Yours would be the first blood in a war that now seems unavoidable. Sperrin, take Falk home. Condure, you shall escort the human around our city. Be vigilant at all times. Welcome to the city of Flyteria. Can you take me to Falk's perch? All right. Hold on. Can you take me down to ground level? This scrap looks like it came from the poster in town. How did it get all the way over this side of the valley? Can you take me to Falk's? Hello again. I didn't thank you properly before. Please know I am grateful for your aid. I'm glad I could help. 
Tell me, is there any way to see your father? As an outsider, you will not be able to visit my father's perch without an offering of some kind. Humans are known for their tools and crafts, at least the ones you are permitted to use. Perhaps you could make something for him. When you asked my father whether he had searched for the stolen property, I wondered how humans could get around unseen, unless they were mages. You are a mage, yes? Nearly. I've heard about your kind. You are not like other humans. Could a mage have stolen those things? It is true that some can move about unseen, but those same mages could not ascend your perches unnoticed. Drop by again soon. I tried to make one for my father, but I am unfamiliar with the strange object in the center. You mean the wheel? Wheel? Never mind. Do you mind if I take this block of wood? Go ahead. I wasn't sure how to finish it anyway. My fa- I'm sure Falk will not mind. This wheel looks broken. May I have it? You wouldn't take a girl's wheel without compensation, right? What did you have in mind? Make me an offer. You'll need to be a little more generous than that. I see.
May this reward... Seven gold. You'll need to be a little more. You'll need to. You'll need. That seems a fair trade. I can't attach them directly. This may require the help of a skilled metal worker. Good blacksmith. Might you attach this wooden wheel and metal pole so that the wheel spins freely at one end? Hmm. I think he's waiting for me to hand over the items and pay. Is that enough? Hmm. Thank you, blacksmith. The feathers are sticky now. a fine gift. Are those my feathers? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Do not be. My father will want to know you had my blessing to use them. Hold it still while I scratch my mark into the wood. There. My father should approve now. You may enter and present your gift. An insightful gift. My son listens well to his father's tales. What do you call this? A windmill. Windmill. <sighs> Falk is as I was in my youth. Too much so, I think. But the past is dead, as are those who were taken from us. Only the future matters. My people will survive in spite of human and forest folk treachery. As you can see, the evidence held to the light casts the darkest shadow over our human neighbors. What does it matter what was stolen? That these thefts happened at all is the most pertinent fact. If you must know, they were grooming implements, adornments, small things of that nature. The thefts occurred in separate locations. Condure can take you to those perches. Go ahead. Observe the items if you must. You will reach the same conclusion. Humans have been among us, uninvited, bringing nothing but ill intent. Two items of value only to humans were discovered in separate perches. Nearby was evidence of further transgression. A leather gauntlet with brass buckles and silver studs 
made for a smallish hand. The owner was evidently a smoker, and I don't think the Flytarians have taken up such vices yet. The mouthpiece is made of brass. Can you take me to the perch where the smoking pipe was found? Can you take me to the perch where the studded gauntlet was found? The Flytarians are not vegetarians. These scraps of fruit must have come from produce outside of the valley. No reason to confiscate. No. There is already fruit scraps in the Flytarian village from my stall, you say? Yes, they were spread across the floor at the scene of a theft. I am short a few apples and a banana, but I'd wager it was those children who like playing nearby. They're certainly fast. May I take a closer look? They went missing from the crate behind me. The fruit scraps in the Flytarian perch likely came from here. Might this brass button have come from the Flytarian village somehow? I should ask around. I found this on the ground nearby. Did you notice who dropped it? No, I'm afraid not. I found this on the ground nearby. Did you notice who dropped it? Let me see that. Ah, that's the insignia of Ignor. Anyone enacting official duty on behalf of Lord Magail wears a uniform adorned with identical buttons. Do such important people grace your stall with their presence? Every day. Why do you ask? I'm investigating a theft. I had no idea mages concerned themselves with the trivialities of us lesser folk. They don't. These thefts occurred in the Flytarian village. Possibly by lesser folk, as you say. Do you know who might have dropped this particular button? Oh, well, <laughs> nobody comes to mind, I'm sorry to say. Then again, I've never paid close attention to those of the favored quarter. No sense feeding one's envy. If there's a connection between the displaced fruit and button, I may find it in the Flytarian Valley. Can you t Strange. I've seen something like that in my cousin's perch. Pekon found it there two days ago. We thought it might be a coin of some sort from your town. You didn't mention this to your father? It did not seem important. I mean, nothing was stolen. I should take a look anyway. Can you direct me to your cousin's perch? Of course. It is on the western side of the valley. Pekon is visiting the Sharpstone Mountains today, but I can permit you entry. Ask Condor. He knows the way. Can you take me to Pekon's perch?
These breadcrumbs may have come from the market quarter, just as the fruit scraps did. Thank you. It's heartening to find that there are still decent folk left in the world. I think that's worth more than coin. I've no idea how valuable this feather comb is. Still, it's yours if you want it. Where did you find that? In Igonor's market quarter. That's more than a little odd. I recognize the markings on the handle. They belong to the widow Parla, but she's been sequestered in mourning for the past month. I imagine you still wish to visit her perch, though. You imagine correctly. Condor can fly you there. Can you take me to the perch of the widow Parla? Where are you, my darling? I wait for you. There you are. What have you brought for me today? Oh, thank you. I know you love me, but you must stop bringing me these trinkets. Where do you get them from? It is not safe, my darling, especially not now. I would never tell anyone it was you. It will always be our secret. We are good at keeping secrets, are we not? No one will ever know who you really are. It would be prudent to deal with the magpie before traveling elsewhere. Certainly. Once you tell me where your mistress's gifts come from... Mistress? Ha! A free fade she is, and there's nothing more to it. I'm waiting. So? Tell me, Magpie, how well can you fly in a heavy cloud of magical fog? Uh, if it means getting rid of you, there's an outcropping with a cave entrance. Do west, you can't miss it. All the best stuff in the world is in there. If your human nose can stand the smell. Thank you, Birdie. Flap off! I'm a little pre- Can you take me to the outcropping? It's due west of here. My candle is now burning. The missing envoys, I presume. The burns suggest they were killed by flame projectiles, like the one that struck Falk. 
Lord Megyle's guards may have been ordered to assassinate them. But for what purpose? Furthermore, why leave them here? And how did the perpetrator move them up here without being noticed? There is another more disturbing possibility, which I had better keep to myself for now. What is this? A conductor? It's like mine, only it has a stylized symbol on it. Two half circles slid apart along a dividing line. This envoy wears a single gauntlet, matching the one I saw in Hawking's perch. The dead envoy's clothing is ripped to shreds. Two missing brass buttons have been torn from his doublet. I have found out all I can. I need to see Hawking. You have shown perseverance in your search for the truth. Most surprising for a human. You have also brought proof that these thefts were but the acts of a mere magpie and its misguided caretaker. Guard, bring her in! You summoned me, noble Hawkane. Your magpie is responsible for the recent plight surrounding our missing property. Failure to disclose this almost edged us into war. My darling is innocent! I know him better than you know your own son! Claw carefully, Parla. While every soul of flight may expect our care, your pet is just that, and no more than a scavenger. You will not speak about my husband that way! Your husband? Parla, your husband is dead. Like my wife. While we both feel their loss still, there is no returning from the higher world. But he has come back to me! 
I knew it the day he died, when I first saw my beloved in his new form. <sighs> we have heard enough. Guard, return her to her perch, and keep watch lest her pet return to cause more mischief. Do not hurt my darling! He must not be kept from me! It appears you were right, and that my son's trust was well placed. Falk grows quickly, something I have overlooked in seasons past. He has coped with the dishonor dealt him better than I could have expected. He will succeed you admirably when his day comes. No small impairment can change that. I will tell him you said so. Perhaps I have been too hasty to judge the humans we have protected so long. The discovery of the envoys changes everything. Their disappearance was clearly not my people's doing, though some in Iganor may believe otherwise. Yet I do not comprehend why humans would kill their own in such a manner. I don't believe the assault on Falk was motivated by mislaid revenge. Yet I am sure it is related somehow to the Envoy's demise. A lot of trouble has been taken to break your long-held alliance. It almost succeeded. The nature of their deaths also disturbs me. For reasons with your forgiveness, I do not wish to discuss. I promise you, Chief Hawkane, to find out all I can as soon as my remaining tasks are completed. Once initiated, I will have greater authority to investigate on your behalf. I would be grateful for that. Is there anything I can do to expedite proceeding? Yes. My master sent me to collect a single griffin's egg. Can you help me? Hmm. I can tell you where to find the griffins. They nest in the mountains west of here and are difficult creatures to approach let alone take something from. Avoid detection when approaching the nests. Conceal yourself whenever possible. If you should be seen, you can expect an aggressive response. Act as some of our lesser kindred. Duck. Also, know that harming them or their unhatched young would do great dishonor to my people, if you are ready. My guard will take you to the Griffin's nests. Farewell. Goodbye, Chief Hawkane, and thank you. One last thing, human. These eyes see more than your kind could ever hope to behold, and see more still when they look upon yours. Hunger is a trait common upon many, for what one wants and cannot have. Be wary of such desires. As we say, to prey upon more than a talon's share is to lose sight of one's horizon. Thank you, Chief Hawkane. Guard, I believe this belongs to Parla. Thank you, human. I will see that it is returned to her. Can you take me to the Griffin nesting grounds? Meet me on the western plateau once you have the egg.
I could try to discover where this stylized conductor came from. The training hall would be a good start. Or I could just get on with my trials. Made it through the second round? I'll have to change my bets. What? I'm joking, Dark. Of course you are. Before I start showing this around, I should seek counsel from a higher authority. Were you looking for Varna in the sheet? So was I. It's strange. He doesn't appear to be anywhere in the tower. That symbol, it looks vaguely familiar, but I can't quite place it. Where did you say you found this? What? Lord Magyle's own envoys? You had better not be fabricating this for your own amusement. At my age, I do not take kindly to immature pranks. I assure you, Master Pyres, that I speak only the truth. If what you say is accurate, then one of our own. No, we must not jump to conclusions. Was there anything else? Someone attacked the Flightarian heir? In this current climate, that is tantamount to treason. Whoever is responsible, mage or no, will be severely punished. Young Dark, you have my full authority to investigate this and discover all you can. We must see this wretched criminal incinerated. I mean, brought to justice. I should not have spoken so. Forgive me. Though the flame may dwindle, it flares all the same. I'm afraid from what you have told me that the culprit is undeniably a mage, for none else could have used a conductor. Also, the deceased's injuries, as you've described them, and the telling choice of tactic used to cripple the Flytarian Prince implicates a fire mage. Whoever is behind this, whatever the motives, I feel certain that this is not the end of it. I am sure you have reached the same conclusion. Enlist whatever help you must, but be selective. We do not yet know if this traitor to the peace had an ally or accomplice. Use caution. Why don't you show the symbol on the conductor to that young earth mage? He is certain to know something or at least could point you in the right direction. Thank you, Master Pyres. I will not fail you. I have no doubt of that, but do not thank me. I fear this task, on the day of your initiation no less, will teach you more than you would wish to learn. Just remember what I have said. In do not allow prejudice to blind you, or our killer may yet slip through your fingers. Bort, do you know anything about this? Now that symbol rings a chime. I've got it. You should be able to find the book you're looking for. Go ahead. Not all of them moved on, it seems. It's a shame the members of this group are not listed. Who was this ringleader? To be honest, I do not know much more than you do. There's a twist. I haven't read everything, you know. Not yet, anyway. Tell you what, why don't you ask Jonas? He would certainly have been around back then. He might remember something. Was that supposed to be a joke? Stranger things have happened, especially in this tower. Sorry I can't help you further. Why the sudden interest in this, if I may ask? You are never this keen on local history. Let's just say it's for personal reasons and leave it at that. All right, fine. If you don't want to tell me. That's just it. 
I'm not sure what to tell you yet, or whether it's wise to say anything at all. Secretive and enigmatic. Look, I do not mean to pry. If there is anything I can do to help, you know where to find me. Thank you, Bort. Don't mention it. I have mine somewhere. Haven't used it since I lost a bed and had to duel Duggan in the Botanic Hall. Those bruises taught me a valuable lesson. Books beat brass. I don't believe there are any more books in this hall about that subject. You will need to make do with the one I already told you about. My task... None... I'm expecting the complete Chronicles of the Missing Continent series to arrive any week now. Almost entirely speculative, of course. No one knows where North and South Elliwell got to. Still, there's no harm in entertaining a little fiction now and again, so long as it's largely grounded in reality. And some think we have no imaginations. Jonas, can you tell me about the severed... Severed square, severed sphere, severed... Circle. Jonas, I need you to look at something and think back. Bort said you might be able to... Not right now! I am observing a rare mating ritual between a pair of scaled sparrows. They spend less than 2% of their time out of the water. Shireen told me about them. Fascinating woman, isn't she? Hmm... What was I saying? Oh yes, the sparrows! Must watch, no distractions, please. As you wish. Jonas shouldn't be too difficult. What's that? Nothing. Kindly get out of the way. His focus is on the telescope. Maybe I can attract his attention that way. Great mists of Marleyine! Recognize something? That symbol. Have I seen it somewhere before? Many years ago. You were here when a group of young mages tried to break away from... I've got it! It was many years ago. A group of young mages tried to break away from our order. Not a bad memory, hmm? Second to none, Jonas. Is there anything else you can recall about them? Perhaps the ringleader? He was never found by the... I seem to recall that the ringleader was never found. What was his name? A bearded chap? Yeah, but then the fire types do like their beards, don't they? Something along the lines of Brosium. Brasium. That Brasium, that's it. Brasham? What else can you tell me about him? Who? Please, Jonas, concentrate. Brasham. Shireen. What? No, we were talking about... She knew him. Really? Quite well, I think. You would have to ask her, though. I will do that. Thank you, Jonas. Hmm? For what? I am glad you have returned safely from the mountains. Jonas assured me you would be all right among the Flytarians, but I was worried all the same. I am fine, Shireen. Honest. Why would I... <clears throat> that was long ago, and I was a very young initiate at the time. But you remember something about it. I have no specific memory, I'm afraid. Of course we all do foolish things in our formative years, though most don't push the boundaries to that extent. To what extent? I thought you said you didn't remember anything. Only vague recollections. If you don't mind, I would rather discuss other things. How do you know about... Uh, no, I cannot help you. You found this? Where? On the dead body of Lord Megyle's envoy. You knew someone called Brasham, who led a group represented by this symbol. Do you think he had anything to do with this? No. I do not believe it. Brasham would never... Shireen, I have to know. I am investigating on behalf of our masters. One of us did this. A fire mage, most likely. If you can tell me anything... All right, but you must promise not to judge him prematurely, okay? I have ways to tell if you are lying. I know that well enough. And yes, I promise. Very well. 
where shall I begin? He and I, no, it starts long before that. Brasham had a troubled past. Even at the age of six, setting foot in Igonor's tower for the first time, there was anger in his eyes. Yet from the moment we met, I felt a connection. I saw him as the younger sibling I never had. As years passed, we grew closer. Our relationship changed. I could sense the burn of his anguish waning. By the time we were both initiated, well, let us say the wisdom of our forebears blinded them to the success of such pairings. It was around this time that Brasham had involved himself with a group of like-minded men, boys, really, who believed the old ways were the better ways. You know our history, from a time when mages ruled with harsh words and harsher magic, before giving that awful task over to our giftless brethren. The Nogs. Dark. I'm sorry, non-mages. That's better. It was not long before this company, young minds veiled by pride and recklessness, began planning a breakaway from the order of Dominatra. They petitioned the initiates, even the younger ones, to join their cause, allowing their message to spread to nearby towns. They barely spared a thought for what might follow. Yet even here, so far from the capital, their activities were noticed. The authorities arrived without announcement or fanfare, and like a silent whirlwind, rounded up the guilty parties. When Brasham found me, his face full of fear, I saw the once sunken anger resurfacing in those beautiful eyes. I had to help him, lest he cause harm to himself or others. I used my powers of deception and influence the most potent of water gifts, to shield him from any who might seek him out. As per the limitations of my magic, he would be forced to stay within the boundaries of Igonor. Nor could he draw near our tower, for those who watch on our High Master's behalf would surely detect him. Were you not suspected of aiding him? Few knew Brasham and I were. Let's just say we were discreet. Of course, I was questioned along with most others, even required to gaze into a sphere of truth, normally reserved for those dreadful interrogations. I passed their flawed tests. How could I confess to having helped a criminal when I had never known anyone I'd termed such? Very clever. A fluid mind cannot be broken. Where is Brasham now? The only place he could find solitude and relative safety. Bloodbark Forest. Can you be more specific? I cannot. My magic conceals him, but it works both ways. So long as he stays within my field of influence, he is hidden from my sight, as from all others. How can I find him? You will need the most precious of gifts your senses. Great. If you do find him, remember your promise to me and tell him that, that I... What? Nothing. It doesn't matter. I wish you luck and may you discover who is truly behind these horrible events. Brasham is innocent. I know him better than we do our elements and may mine forgive me for saying so. Brasham had one, as did all those who belonged to that group. Just the one? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Few I very a uh, brash to the
There's... There's no... This material looks familiar. If I'm right, Shireen has been making house calls. I can understand why she kept that from me, but doesn't she realize Brasham would be compromised if she were caught coming here? Then again, what is it they say about love? Uh, Brasham, I presume? What do you want, boy? Three of Lord Maguile's envoys have been murdered, and there has been an attack on the Flytarian heir. And you think it was me? Well, uh... Go on then, speak quickly. You know who I am, so you must know why I'm here. Stop wasting my time. And be thankful I'm the one you found out here. Were it Pyres, this is my home and has been for many years. Too many to count your age against. They leave me be, and I them for the most part. For your frivolous initiation, I take it? Sounds like something the masters would concoct. You may be out of luck though. The Redcaps have been busy. Your trials are irrelevant to me. They have no regard for what they perceive as lesser creatures, so I don't mind returning the favor. Speak poorly of her and I will roast you from the inside out. Were it not for Shireen, I would be rotting in one of the High Master's dungeons. Or dead. Do not think I'd grant you as many choices. I have reason to believe a fire mage attacked the Flytarian heir. Was it you? I have no love for those creatures, but that's no proof I have harmed one. They did not meet their end at my hand, and I care nothing for your opinion on the matter. Did we plan to divide ourselves from the fold? Yes. Do I regret it? Not for a moment. The mages have embraced passivity. In time, it will prove our downfall. There was a time when we were a force greater than any this world has ever seen. We may have been brazen in the old days, even brutal, yet there was order. No mage would dare attempt what you suspect me of. The Nogs feared us, but we ensured their safety and prevented them from repeating their mistakes. Now they resent us for it. They do not understand our abilities. Of course not. Nor do they comprehend how easily they can be led into the trap of progress. Ungrateful vermin, every one of them. Do not think for a moment that there aren't those that will again try to pull humanity to the brink of elemental destruction. When that happens, you can be sure even our kind will not be spared. The elements shall respond as before, only this time, they will take all of Elliwald's children with them. You seem certain of that. I know my element, boy. Far better than a mere initiate could hope to. You want me to list names? They would do you no good. Most would have left Ignor after their interrogation. Only one or two stayed behind. Who are they? From what I hear, let's just say they are in a competition of sorts, for the position of Firemaster, no less. Varner... and Phileum? Shared history isn't always beneficial. Don't trust me yet? Perhaps you are not the imbecile I took you for. You want proof of my guilt or innocence? Find it, 
If you can, touch the wrong thing and you will leave this world an ashen cloud. I was warned not to touch anything. Brasham appears surprisingly well kept, all things considered. Shireen's magic must be more versatile than I thought. If the accommodation weren't a big enough clue, this should eliminate any doubt. If the I should examine these more closely. Was In light of his warning, taking Brasham's belongings would be unwise. Brasham's meager belongings are stored here. Brasham still has his stylized conductor. The one I found on the dead envoy likely belongs to someone else. All the same. So, boy... Your conclusion? That conductor might be yours. It could also belong to someone from your old group. I need more evidence. Ah, a second spark of intelligence. Here's an idea. Try asking the victim I allegedly attacked. See what he remembers. Believe me, believe it or not, I have better things to do. Run. What? I said run. trying to remember. As I made my pass over the town, I thought I saw something shiny just beyond its walls. I swooped lower to get a better look. That is when I was struck by the airborne flame. It was glinting in the sunlight. At first I thought it was a human tool, but it was sparkling too. How could I resist? I had not seen anything like that near the town before. Before? You led me to believe it was your first flight over Iganor. Please don't tell my father. Forgiveness is not one of his strengths. I commenced my secret visits many months ago. At first, they were occasional and very brief. Later, as I gained confidence, my forays became more frequent. Early mornings were best, before the valley came to life. Soon, I found myself craving the freedom. And why shouldn't I? I love Flyteria, but a home one never leaves, however beautiful, is no better than a cage. This desire is my inheritance, the price I pay for being my father's son. I saw it the instant before it hit my leg, just as the flame seemed to leap across to my wing. Now that I think about it, I recall seeing a shape on the ground, a figure. It was crouched between two bushes, as if hiding. I am fairly certain the flame came from that direction. I do not re- Wait, there was something. As I saw the glint, the figure raised an arm, and a robed sleeve fell back. I glimpsed a mark on its right wrist, a scar in the shape of an eye. I can't believe you were able to see anything at all. We Flyterians have exceptional eyesight. I just wish I could be more precise. But then, I was falling out of the sky not long after. Drop by again soon. I spoke with Brasham. I see. 
Was he... well? Well enough to threaten me. Sounds like he's doing fine then. How long has it been? I don't... I know you've been visiting. Oh, for too long, I think. The eyes of the high tower appear even this far. It is difficult to sneak away. Promise you will say nothing. About what? Thank you, Dark. Falk's attacker had a scar. On the right wrist, in the shape of an eye. How did... The mark of the flame. The what? It is the branding received during a fire mage's second initiation. Do you have such a mark? See for yourself. Nothing. I am not surprised you haven't heard of it. It is a rite of passage performed in secret among our own, kept from the uninitiated and other castes. I was soon to receive my branding when I was forced to relocate myself. I only know that it involves a fuller commitment to the flame beyond what is stated publicly, and that fire mages must bear the mark if they are to be accepted among their brethren. The scar never fades, but I suspect that is the point. It is a shame I missed out. The conductor I found among the bodies of the envoys, does it belong to Varner? Either him or his rival. You will have to ask our mutual friend. I intend to. You should be careful. I trusted him once, and I'm still paying for that mistake. What do you mean? No, I've answered your questions. No more. Dusk is approaching. I had better get back to the hallowed hall. You have succeeded a second time, Initiate Dark. It is evident that your mentor's faith was not misplaced. Your compassion and diplomacy will hold you in good stead with the Flytarians for many years to come. The Griffin's Egg, as precious and sacred as that which Mother did, will be returned to its keepers at the conclusion of your trial. Care for it well. It is time to look to the forest, where your most difficult and dangerous task lies waiting. Let your element guide you. I came like you asked, Pug. What is this all about? I, uh, wanted to introduce you. This is... Names are not important at this time. Please, sir, sit. Have a drink. What is this, then? Want to know how real men have a good time? Ah! The ale's boiling! 
Oh, so it is. Let me pour you another. A good time, you say? I would think you've more pressing priorities. Such a regrettable history deserves recompense. Do you not think? What do you know about me? Only what your friend Pug here has said. Pug? He wants to help. Yeah? How? You are an opportunistic man, friend. One who has lost much to the likes of Ignor's Lord. As you seek in vain to recover a life taken from you, a gambler in you senses his chance. Change rises like smoke from a smoldering ruin. Tell me, how much would you risk for a change, say, of occupancy in the Lord's Mansion? Ha! Talk is fine, but it makes no difference. The King chooses his Lords. Such choices can be reneged, especially when said lords become unpopular. Have you not heard of the rumors? About Maguile making friends with those forest cretins? Sounds like something he'd do. Risk his people's lives by letting those things in town, just to get hold of whatever they've got stashed away. Greed is among your kind's greatest traits. And I hear he's planning to sever ties with the mountain folk. Who will protect us, then? Not you mages, that's for sure. Ah, but like yourself, I have a greater interest. Revolution. What's in it for you? Let us say, personal satisfaction. Accept this as a show of good faith. We have a deal in the interest of change. That's a lot of change. Sure, why not? It's getting late, and I still need to collect that trinicorn horn from the forest and return to the tower before sunrise. Time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge. Dark, I hear you have completed the second of your trials. Congratulations. Thank you. Is there something you wanted to see me about? Should that mean something to me? It sounds like a retired group of fanatics. What are you novices allowed to read these days? I shall have to speak with Bort. The King's son is returning home from the frigid fringes of East Elliwold. An impressive adventure for a young child. It is said he possesses his father's boldness and his late mother's humility. That's the spirit. I have to show you something. My conductor? I haven't seen this since... Where did you find it? You are certain it's yours? Without a doubt. I lost it in the market some months ago. I've had to borrow one from the Relic Hall. It doesn't work anywhere near as well. Do you remember anything about the day you lost your conductor? I seem to recall I was short on polish that day. For the armor displays and so forth, it's much more effective than Shireen's cleaning spells. But uh, don't tell her I said that. I assumed I had been pickpocketed in the market. How did you come by it? It was in the possession of some giftless. The three of them. They looked official and a bit cold. Hmm, perhaps they traded their coats for it. I've never fully understood the giftless. In any case, thank you. Why would you need a conductor in town? <laughs> I am sure I do not need to tell you that it is a dangerous world beyond our walls. Can you honestly say that you haven't carried your conductor everywhere? Well... There you go, then. I came looking for you earlier, 
My apologies, I was needed elsewhere. Where? I beg your pardon? I meant... What took you away? An errand, a trivial matter. Needless to say, it took a sizable chunk out of my day. What can you tell me about the symbol on your conductor? Oh, just something I made up years ago. I must have been about your age. It was either that or put a V on everything. I grew out of using it after a while. It doesn't mean anything? Why should it? Like I said, I made it up. Don't you scribble symbols all over your study parchments. They don't mean anything, do they? Uh, no. So, there weren't any other conductors that looked like this? That's a curious question. Why would there be? As you say, curiosity. I did not make copies, if that's what you mean. Did you ever know a Brasham? Where did you hear that name? Uh, Jonas happened to mention it. I asked him whether anything exciting had ever happened in Iganor. He mentioned something about some troublesome boys who ran afoul of the authorities. Brasham was one of them. You should notify the events hall. Jonas remembers. <laughs> Perhaps they'll celebrate it during the Air Mage's Autumn Festival. Do you remember him at all? Brasham? I'm not sure. I... Uh, yes, I seem to remember a boy with that name. He and I went through our initiation around the same time. I, I remember now. It turned out he was the head of a small rabble group the city authorities didn't appreciate. No one knows what happened to him. You were not involved with this group yourself? Who told you that? No one. I was just asking. I might have attended the odd meeting. They spoke of our history, mostly. At the time, I was interested in the subject. Especially around the time of the Fourth Rulership. It's a fascinating period. I can recommend a number of excellent texts if you'd like. No, thank you. I've studied enough for one decade. <laughs> I don't blame you. You weren't in trouble when the authorities came? For participating in group discussions. Hardly. It was Brasham they wanted. I heard the group was doing more than having meetings. They were planning a breakaway from the Order. Perhaps they were. But I can assure you and your source that I had no part in that. Why do I feel as if I am being questioned by the authorities again? My apologies, Varner. I have to say, your interest in all this concerns me. Are you entertaining similar thoughts? Thinking of starting your own order? No, I, uh, just... Because if you were, it would be disappointing to the Masters, wouldn't you agree? Yes, you're right. I won't say anything more about it. To anyone. A tactical decision. You are improving. Seeker of power, master your element. Use your gifts in the hall most sparse. Reveal the scroll. Was there something else? No, not right now. You seem tense, Dark. Perhaps you should rest before continuing your trial. No. I'm fine, thank you. See you soon, Varner. Why didn't Varner admit greater involvement in the Severed Circle? What is he hiding? Did he attack Falk and murder the envoys? If so, why? Thaleum, Brasham, either could still be involved, somehow. This is making my head hurt. In any case, it's getting late. I should get a move on. That only made the flames grow fiercer.
There's another scroll inside the box. Apparently, this hall has a function after all. Receive your power. <laughs> Ready for some one-to-one? -one? A challenger for Dark! Clear the hall! Shock unleashes a series of sustained electrical discharges upon your opponent. Why not try it out on Matt? Magnificent! The more powerful your shock spell, the longer the electrical discharge will torment your foe. Vortex is perhaps the strongest air spell the Sphere of Knowledge can teach you. A swirling tornado hoists your defenseless foe into the air, finally crashing him to the ground, dealing critical damage. Spectacular! I do so enjoy seeing that one in action. Now that we have covered everything, would you like a one-on-one -on -one practice session? <laughs> well done, Dark. Try harder next time, Mac. That's the spirit. There's no... There's no...
Not enough. Help me! My legs! If I can't get away, the Grumps will get me! Grumps? Or... Or... something. Help! Hey! Come back here with that egg! I need that! Seeker of power, your deeds have proven you worthy. All knowledge contained within this sphere is now yours. You will become the... Just get on with it! Receive your power. I am... I... am... You were... Shoot! The mightiest of mages. Why not use a trinicorn? Their blood is much richer for cap dying. Because you fool, we slaughtered the last of them yesterday. Besides, I need human blood to commune with the lower world. There are only so many peasants Megayo can send me before the townspeople start asking questions. What happens if the you know who? Agreed. Then you skull rot. Everything we've been promised will be ours. What about a promise to the fat human? The town's lord? We can go back on that later. Remember to bring out the human when I'm ready. I need time to properly attune myself. That sounds difficult. For you, thinking past the next meal is difficult. Now don't let me down. Yes, boss. All things considered, this might have been a lucky turn. If a trinicorn wandered too close to the camp, there's a good chance I'll find its horn somewhere around here. Better take a look. I should also try to find my belongings while I'm at it.
I have no interest in learning the language of demons. A book entitled Demonic Dialects. That should stop the creaking. Success! The lock has yielded. This looks like the master key. Here are my belongings. The cabinet houses a small ruby brooch. It reminds me of the one that Cray saw. My retrieve spell failed to lock onto anything. Looks like a rotting carcass has been covered by a mound of compost. I don't have enough mana to cast this spell. I don't have enough. I don't. I don't have. I don't. I feel fresh. Sharp times three. Now I just need to get back to the hallowed hall by sunrise. Sounds like I'm being missed. Time to get out of here. Those sharp stakes prevent me Not much.
over now. The forest goblins remain unchecked. And why? Because our Lord knows fear will make you pay every last coin for his protection. I say we remove that miser from his manor and replace him with someone who cares for the people of this town. But you said you only cared about... Shut up, Pug. I know I have not lived amongst you long, but I see the pain in your eyes, the hardships you endure. I know them well. It's true I've strayed more than any of you could imagine, never knowing a home or purpose. But here, in Iganor, I have found both. Magyal, who takes all and gives back naught, cares nothing for you, but I do. What about your new friend? He's a mage. They don't help us. Is that the help you're looking for? Who's had enough of this so-called lord putting his own pockets before the welfare of your loved ones? Yeah! Who thinks Iganor deserves a new lord? Yeah! Who will help me become that lord? Yeah! Fred, 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 Fred. I think it's fair to say I'm lost. Not again. We apologize for dragging you here, literally. But we couldn't be sure of your intentions. What you've told us confirms our suspicions. The Red Caps are planning to abandon the forest and live in the town as humans. Good riddance, you might say. But that will not be the end of it. Mark my words. They will return with their human slaves to wipe us out. Or worse, make us wear their red caps again. <coughs> we will not let them. He will help us. <coughs> Child. You will return to the Red Cap camp and stop Straw from raising the lower world inhabitants. Me? Why? Two reasons. One, we're holding this nice egg and horn until you return. Two, it would be bad for everyone, human or goblin, if that dolt manages to summon anything from down there. And three, I wasn't going to mention the wars, but it's about time the mages made up for what happened to us. So, if you are planning to leave this forest with your possessions, want a town to go back to, and care about writing more than a few wrongs, you will do exactly what we say. Anything else? No, that was all. Then listen up. None of us can go as we would be recognized, so we will send you back disguised as a goblin. A little trick we picked up from a mage who wandered into our camp a few years ago. He wanted a green cap for an initiation or some such. Luckily for him, we only dip ours in leaf juice. Take this and drink up. better already. Now listen, you won't be able to cast your human spells in goblin form. Besides, you'd just look silly. We'd also appreciate it if you could bring Stroff back with you. He has some serious re-education awaiting him. Well, off you go then. Um, one thing. 
How am I supposed to stop Straff from raising anything from the lower world? Ha! How humans have managed to get this far, I will never know. Improvise, of course. Getting hold of Straff's summoning book would help, too. See you, if you get back. You mean, when? Sure I do. Goodbye. Wait, I do not know you. You must be the new chef. What's your name? Uh, Zoltan Cleave Clan. Good. We were wondering when you were going to arrive. Stroth has been waiting for his new chef forever. So, can I see your leader? He's busy getting ready to, uh, uh commoon with our friends. You know the ones down there. I thought you needed human blood for that. Hey, you are smart. Our last supply got away, but we found some more wandering about near here. Must have been lost. If you wait a little while, you might get to see them. Have you seen them before? Yeah. I try not to look, though. Stroth is braver than I am. He wants them to stay above ground with us. Do they want to stay above ground? Not sure. Stroth says they'll come up for good if they can trust us. So, we're not allowed to make any commotion. But you don't have much time. Struff wants a recipe made. It's for the summoning after party. I was supposed to prepare it, but, um... What? I can't read good. I'll see what I can do. Go to the cooking hut. You should find everything you need. Okay, time to prepare a red cap dish. How hard could it be? There, one awful smelling meal, unfit for human consumption. Hopefully I've earned my goblin stripes now. An appropriately oppressive cooking fire. Predictably hot. That is neither healthy nor... You idiot! I told you not to skimp on the candles! I couldn't find any more! I don't want excuses! Either find two more candles for the pentagram, or I'll stick wicks in your thumbs instead! What's the problem? I've looked everywhere in the camp! There aren't any more spare candles! Strop will have my thumbs! Can you find me some? Where should I look? Try the human town! If you're quick, they won't see you. And if they do? Then Strauf won't get his candles. We can't have that. When you have them, place them on that pointy thing.
The venom really took a toll. I'd better return to the Red Cap camp with these. I am ready. Have all the Red Caps assemble. Okay, boss. Hear me, O oh mighty ones of the lower world! Enter this horrid, glaring realm of humans and spread your darkness across their land! We wait for you, O oh magnificent shades of the lower world! Join us, so together we may conquer, pillage, and so forth! If this is a bad time, O oh fearsome denizens of the lower world, then show us a sign, and we will call upon you again tomorrow. Maybe they're not in. Shut up! I'm trying to... I feel strange. I think the tonic is wearing off. Melad Sepokaraka! Time to make myself scarce. That was lucky. I need to stop the ritual. If I could just get Stroff to drop that summoning book. You have found the tome. It is time to receive your power. Stand upon the most magical of signs. I don't understand. You promised... Power. It stands before you. For sparing me, I will give you what you desire. Complete the summoning. Draw me from my prison, as you draw water into your body. How? 
I am bound to the dagger you still carry. Through it we may speak. The blade serves as a conduit, linking us in our locations. Place it upon the most magical of signs, but do not leave the circle. The dagger just shattered. What are you doing? It is not worth it to unleash someone as treacherous as you upon the world. You stupid child! No! I need to identify this I knew I should have locked the door. It's over, Stroff. Yes, yes, you won. I get it. What do you want? You will accompany me back to the Green Cap Camp. They put you up to this? I might have known. This has their sticky, stinking leaf juice all over it. Will you come? Or do I have to make you? Ugh, fine. After you. So good to have you back with us, Stroff. <laughs> you have our gratitude for bringing him to us. With the summoning book out of Stroff's greedy hands. Hey! He will be unable to raise anything anytime soon. Good job. Yeah, brilliant. Looks like a page is missing. Don't look at me! The book was already falling apart when I got it! Which raises a valid point. Why would a human like Miguel send Stroff a book on how to summon demons? Where would he even get something like that? Well, Stroff? How would I know? I didn't ask. Besides, I only dealt with his messenger. And you simply trusted this human? We had a deal. He'd give me the book, and in exchange, I'd let him command a few demons. Command? The Giftless couldn't hope to control a demon. They can't even speak their language. Stroff, this messenger, what did he look like? As if I'd notice. You humans all smell the same. Stroff. Fine. <sighs> Tall, thin, beard, wore a gold mask and hood. Had one of those brass knuckle protectors like this kid does. Oh no. What is it? I may know who gave Stroff the summoning book, but I am hoping my intuition is misplaced. If you have no objection, I would like to keep the tome. It may prove useful. Very well. Brave human, you may have your belongings back. And the summoning book. Oh, and take these potions. Your magical friend left them behind. We prefer our own natural tonics. Yours give us a rash. As an extra token of our thanks, allow me to present you with this ancient mystical emerald. Apparently you mages go nuts for these things. Thank you. Don't mention it. We've got a whole box of them we're trying to get rid of. When you are ready, you have but to exit our camp, and you shall find yourself in a familiar part of the forest. Tell me, what will become of Stroth? He will be treated well, I assure you. We have great plans for his re-education.
she doesn't want my possessions. And I... The dial won't turn. The hallowed hall must be closed until morning. Good thing I have until dawn. Well, at least I can find out where this summoning book came from. Ah, hello, Dart. Finished your three tasks? Yes. I am ready to be initiated. The masters and all the other mages have retired for the night. Looks like your ceremony will have to wait till tomorrow morning. Oh. Why are you still awake? You know me, nocturnal tendencies. Besides, there are less distractions at night. It means I can get more reading done. I should have known. I need to know if this book came from the reading hall. Summoning, yes, I know it. There's only one way to take a book from here, and that's to borrow it. A protection spell of my own design. Not that you would know about the lending rules. You read enough for both of us. Can you tell me who borrowed it? I will have to look it up. Got it. How do you do that? I attune myself to the record stored in the archive hall. It's like having a massive index inside your head. Care to try? Uh, no thank you. So, who borrowed it? It was Varner. Why? Is it important? Do you know where he is? It is getting late, but he might still be in the training hall. If you're lucky. The Ancient Arts of Arson. Hmm. There's a note sticking out. It doesn't appear to have come from the book. Better leave it where I found it. He isn't here. I can't wait until tomorrow. I need to speak to Varner tonight. Hear him explain how this is all a misunderstanding. I'm going to need help locating him. I just have to convince Bort. Bort? It is vital that I see Varner. Tonight. May I ask what this is about? Uh... I, I don't... It's difficult to... Dark, what's the matter? It's only circumstantial, I know, but... Go on. I believe Varner may be responsible for assaulting a Flytarian, two near attacks on Ignor, and at least three giftless deaths. What? Are you sure? Elements guide us! Your... Your reluctance to accept this is understandable, I mean... Varner? I know... But I can't ignore the signs when they all point in the same direction. I have to see him, hear the truth in his own words. Can you help me? Well, I would lend you my finer amulet, but if you recall, it doesn't work. I'd need a special emerald from... I might be able to help with that. Here. That's fantastic! Only one problem. The emerald will need to be fitted properly, and it's fiddly work to say the least. How long? Not sure. I'll have to check the installation instructions, dig up the tools from my private hall, and then research the right words to activate it. I can't wait around for Bort to fix it. There has to be another way to locate Varner. Is there any way to find out the combination to a private hall? Only if the person assigned to it tells you. There are very strict rules about... Bort? <sighs> if you're asking me whether I know Varner's combination, I don't. What I do know is that most mages choose their own private hall combinations, so it's a question of knowing Varner well enough to- Guess? That's not helpful, Bort. Maybe not. Ah, but this might be. Check the bookshelves. What for? The title Varner borrowed four days ago. How is that supposed to... Wait, isn't that when all the combinations were changed? It was. 
I know it's a stretch, but I distinctly recall Varner paying close attention to the spine. This is the book Varner borrowed. It's filled with sonnets and short poems. I can't see anything meaningful written in these pages. I hope there's something in here that will disprove my theory. Where are you, Varner? What's this? A diary? Did Varner drop it? Varner must have written this a long time ago. This part of the journal consists of many similar entries. I'll skip ahead a bit. Elements guide us. The journal's covered in blood. I'll leave it here. That book isn't on my required reading list. I have no wish to become a member of Varner's little club. The pendant has a unique design, which matches the markings on Varner's conductor. There can't be too many like it. Varner must keep his most personal belongings in here, or his most incriminating. A note of some kind, written in Varner's handwriting. Looks like Varner was a member after all. Not only that, but a co-founder. He must have let Brasham take the blame for the group's activities. Varner lied about his involvement, to my face no less. To think I trusted him. There's Phileum's name mentioned as a witness. He was a member of Varner's old group, just as Brasham indicated. Did he have anything to do with this? I'm loath to dismiss any lead. But I'm running out of time. All I know is that it's late, and Varner isn't here. Given what I've learned, it seems likely he's up to something outside the tower. I need to get out of his private hall and find a way of locating him. From this elevation, I can see a large number of people amassing in the favored quarter. I'd better take a closer look. I see something. A crowd, assembled at the gates of Lord Maguile's Manor. And what's this? Fend is standing in front of them giving a speech. There's a hooded figure nearby. Varner. This tower has no alarm system like some of the newer ones. There's no time to work out the combination to every hall. I must stop whatever is transpiring alone.
It is time, my fellow citizens, to end the rule of this treacherous and misguided fiend who calls himself our Lord. Lord MacGyle. Yes, Pug, they know that. Can I count on you, friends, to help me this night? <laughs> then let us begin! The Lock Mage, if you please. Follow me! And me! I have to get to Lord Maguile before... Well, well, of all the mages I considered a potential problem, you never made the list. Varner, you have to stop this! Varner? I suppose the ruse was effective. Who are you? Pyres? I don't... Understand? Let me help you. Imagine being born so immeasurably gifted that you incinerate your entire family at the age of four. Now imagine how that felt. All that power, that purpose. Then, to grow up revered, even feared, with the greatest expectations placed upon you, only to fall short of them all, peaking as master of this insignificant province. And finally, to realize that no one, not a soul, will remember that boy, that child who tasted power beyond reckoning, who knew his name should last. This world is meant to burn, and I was meant to burn it. Varner would comprehend, were he conscious. What have you done with him? Where is he? Where he can do the most damage, as his element intended. I consider it his penance for interfering. Varner knew? Yes, though our confrontation was too rushed to learn how. Now come. I sense you wish to waste time asking me pointless questions. To ignite chaos, light as many fires as you can. It will take Bort years to learn how I circumvented his protection spell. As for the Redcaps, Stroff was as grateful as any goblin can be. It still astounds me how a few coins will assuage a fool's fear enough to wander to his death. To think, he almost succeeded in raising the demons of the lower world. You have been busy, haven't you? Not the easiest to banish or control, but it can be done. And who in Ignor do you think is the most qualified? The goblins would never accept help from a mage. They have not forgotten what we did to them. Miguel was the natural choice to frame. The self-centered imbecile had it coming. Hawkeyn would have led an all-out attack over a broken eggshell. His errant son was an irresistible target. It would have been short. The tower would have been forced to defend the town, with the fire mages on the front line. Can you imagine the sky raining so many feathers? Jonas might have even left his hall. Enough prattle. I read your diary. Then you comprehend. This is my purpose, my destiny. I will live on for all time. You cannot be our fire master forever. Of course not, but I can be the last. They always remember the last. Pyres, the master who stood at the fall of Igonor. We both know this insurrection is doomed. When the king's army arrives, the dissidents will be quashed and our tower disbanded. Varner was to be blamed, but he has a greater purpose now. Curse you, Pyres! Where is Varner? Temper? I've got a better question. 
do you have time to search for him and save your precious Lord? Better still, will you live to do either? Bort! I got my finder amulet working. After you left, I asked it to show me Varner, and it led me into town. Then I heard the commotion and came here. Quickly, take it. If he's in danger, there's not much time. Find Varner. Remember, the faster it flashes, the nearer you are. Watch out! Not bad for a bookworm. Now go! The amulet is pulsating slowly here. I had better find Varner. Who knows how long Bort can hold out? As for Lord Maguile... The amulet is at its brightest here. Varner must be close. It's not locked. That's a first. I have no idea what this is, but I have a strong feeling I need to get rid of it now. Dark, what is going on? Our Firemaster has gone mad and has set the townspeople against their lord. Now Bord is fighting him and... Pyres. Yes, I remember now. How did you find out? Jonas, he saw the Flytarian heir being shot down with fire and managed to tell me before he got sidetracked. After several hours searching the records hall for absentees with no success, I noticed one of the entries had been altered. Difficult to spot, and only a master could make such a change. When you showed me my missing conductor, I realized you must have uncovered something yourself. I arranged to meet Pyres. Our fire master tried to assure me that it was an error, but he could tell I was skeptical. You can guess what happened next. I must go to the Earth Mage's aid. Do what you can to stop the mob. The situation must be contained. What is it? Jonas was wrong. I am no more level-headed than any air mage. If I had been more attentive... You could not have seen this. Pyres is a master of the highest order. Though clearly that is not enough for him. Trust me. Your nature far from hindered you. Dark, before you go, there is one more thing. I am sorry I lied to you. My past, I am not proud of it. I behaved recklessly in my youth, betrayed friends. It is only fitting that it has come back to haunt me. I cannot change what I have done, but I hope you can forgive me. And Brasham? Will you ask his forgiveness? I... I will find a way to make it up to him. Somehow. Quickly now. We must hurry.
Hey, you! You're needed at the front gate! Uh, there's some riffraff causing trouble! Get a move on! Are you? What are you doing here? My name is Dark, my lord, and I am here to... You're a maid! I didn't send for your motley lot. No, my lord, but I thought you would appreciate the help, seeing as there are a large number of your people downstairs who would like to have you thrown out. Literally. If you are referring to that rabble below, I assure you I am quite safe. My guards trained with the king's army. They are no strangers to quelling pithy insurrections. My lord, do you have any idea why they are coming for you? How the devil would I know? The peasantry are so fickle, one cannot keep track of every minuscule complaint. The price of beans one day taxes the next, ale shortages, though I might sympathize with that one. Thieves, disease, the weather. They think you have turned against the Flytarians and are in league with the Red Cap Goblins. Why in the lower world would they think that? Well, um, because the Firemaster has been spreading rumors to that effect. One of yours? What for? It's complicated. Then I suggest you go out there and uncomplicate things. But surely you should... Go on! You came here to save me from a mess your lot started, so get on with it. At least lock the door. I will, but just to keep you from coming back in. That is a difficult man to care about. The guards are barring the mob at the main doors downstairs. Trained or not, even they cannot hold those numbers for long. There's MacGyle's room, Finn, at the top of the stairs! Yes, I can see that, Pug. Citizens of Iganor, you have to stop this madness! This is no business of yours, mage. Step aside! Lord MacGyle is innocent of your accusations! You lie! All you have are rumors, fed to you by the Firemaster! And all you have is your word. I have been to the Flytarian City. They remain your allies and protectors. I have also been deep inside the forest. Its folk will not bother you anytime soon. Why should we believe you? Show us proof that you've been there. This is a griffin's egg. I would not have been able to obtain one without the Flytarian's permission. It is a sign of their friendship. That only proves you're in one of those places. Which still leaves one more. Yes, Pug, he knows that. This is the horn of a trinicorn, which the Red Cap Goblins have hunted to extinction. That I stand before you with this is proof that they are in no position to attack you. This is a trick! He is conspiring with the Lord and his cohorts. Press on, my friends. He is only a boy. Do not let his puny spells stop you. Time for plan B. Bolt. Oh, 
That could have gone better. I hope Miguel's door holds out. Mine too, for that matter. I can't use combative magic. I'll have to think of something else, quickly. The chair has wedged under the handle. Nobody will be entering through the door, but I won't be leaving that way either. It's jammed, Fen. Forget about him. It's Maguile we're after. Get over here. That flimsy lock on the door to Maguile's bedchambers won't last long. Why have you returned? They are trying to break in. We need to block these doors from the inside. You do, you mean? That should do it. Just how am I supposed to sleep with that incessant pounding? Go and make it stop immediately. Expel that rabble from my house. I can't get back into the main hall. Here is the key to the ground floor. Well, don't just stand there. Come and take it. Now, for goodness sake, go. With the mob gone, this might be my best chance to deal with Fend and Pug. You said you could take care of the door yourself, Pug. You said that, but there's something heavy in the way. It's probably Maguile. For once in your life, be useful. Why did you have to send the mob away to ransack the Lord's office in town? They could have helped! Because this is my moment! When I toss that ponce out on his ear, I don't want a bunch of rowdy imbeciles spoiling it! Or making off with your future property. Shut up, Pug, and put your back into it! Hey, Pug! Catch! Uh! I thought I smelled something. You seem to have lost your friend, Fend. I have lost more than you could ever know, boy. Keep it down out there. I'm trying to sleep. Tell me, do they teach you about pain in that tower of yours? About death? You think that's funny? I'll ask you again. Tell me, do they... Whatever troubled past you've had, it doesn't justify this. Quiet! I've already asked you once. Have you watched your entire family fall to sickness while those with the power to help do nothing? Have you grown up alone, hungry, while the likes of Maguile enjoy their third helping? Have you gone a day in your life wanting for anything? They took me when I was six. You're really testing my patience. No apologies, no explanations, except to tell my family I was special, that I needed to be with my own kind. I would be treated well, better than if I had stayed, but I would not be allowed to see them again until I was initiated. That was 10 years ago. I don't even know if they're still alive. And what, you think this makes us the same? I do know about pain, and uncertainty, and wanting what you can't have. 
I'm warning you, don't make me come out there. I'm supposed to believe any of that. It's up to you, Fend. Just don't tell me you're the only one who deserves his share. Or more. If you're not careful, you'll get... More than you bargained for. I thought I told you to! Who the devil is that? That's the man who would be Lord. Lord? And what of the mob? Ransacking your town office, I believe. I'll have it sorted soon. You do that, and clear that heaving lump off my balcony. Maybe now I can get some sleep. You've dealt with our revolutionaries, I see. Well done. A bunch of humans? Easy. Pyres? Bore to die. Ugh! Do continue, Varna. No? Then allow me. Both of your friends managed to lose me in the heat of battle. When the fools split up, I made my move. Now what? You'll kill all three of us? I don't see why not. You would murder a boy, Pyres. Have you no compassion? My dear Varna, always the idealist. I'm more of a practical man. In any case, my nature was decided long ago. You didn't mean for your family to die. It was an accident. You were only a child. The elements wish it. They wish for you to go on killing? They wish for me to survive, if only in name. No one will remember you, Pyres. You're just a common madman. History will swallow you whole. Fool! Speak for yourself. Not enough. As have I, of power exceeding even that of the High Masters. It can be yours. I can help you attain it. You can be everything you desire. You are right. I have craved more power than I could ever hope to wield. Dark, no. Then you accept. But I have seen what such desires do to others. The priestess, whose lust for dominance did not abate over five centuries. Stroth, who saw himself equal to a demon lord. Fend, blind to the futility of his ambition. And then there's you. No. I will have what the elements see fit to grant me. Nothing more. Then you are just another fool. I can live with that. Are you okay? Uh. I've been better. What happens now? I think Pyres has an appointment with the dungeon hall. We have a dungeon hall? <laughs> we will. Soon. If either of you are wondering, I'm fine. Take your time. The morning came, and with it, many changes. Through our tower, the High Masters of Dominatra were apprised of the previous night's events. The King would reassess Lord Megyle's posting in Iganor. 
measures would be taken to ensure nothing like the threat Pi Rays posed would happen again. As for the former master, he would spend his remaining days in our dungeon hall. For myself, I had saved both Bort and Varner. Blessed with their gratitude, I eagerly awaited my impending initiation. Initiate Doc, you have successfully completed your tasks using your considerable intelligence and skills. You have shown great competence in your abilities. More importantly, you employed them to protect the township from the Fire Master's vile machinations. As a result of your good judgment, the Priestess remains imprisoned in her island palace. We will see to it that she remains undisturbed, until such a time that she may be useful to us again. On behalf of my people, not least my son, accept our congratulations and thanks. Your name will be spoken in our realm with honor and reverence for many years to come. Your handling of the goblin situation prevented a serious breach of the natural law. Thanks to you, the inhabitants of the lower world shall remain where they belong, in the beliefs and tales of the human mind. If I may be allowed to speak, this initiate has performed above and beyond any who have come before him. His actions saved my life, enabled Pyres' defeat, and protected Ignor from a political firestorm. As the new Firemaster, I extend my endless thanks to him. So noted. Come, Initiate Dark. Kneel before us. We all have a beginning. A moment that defines us, shapes us into something new. For some, that moment is painless, unnoticed. For others, it is a sharper turn, one that comes at a cost, a loss. Change is inevitable. I know my beginning. I know where it has taken me. The future becomes history, some remembered, most not. As I go forward, Two things are certain. I am dark. I am a mage.
What took you so long?